the year is 2023. PBS Plus has just launched bringing the world's streaming services to 4,387. How can anyone be expected to go through all this content? Fear not, loyal passengers. Captain Joe Shoes and his first mate Meds are here to travel through space and time to bring you the best nuggets pop culture has to offer. Strap in. It's time for the Car Jomez Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 365 of the Car Jomez Podcast. I'm Mez, and my co host, as always, is the magistrate of Caravan City, Captain Joe Shoes from the Car Jomez Podcast. And Gomez, I don't know if you were going to bring it up. But as this episode airs, I am newly in my Jackie Robinson year. <laughs> oh, baby. I mean, I you know, I was I was gonna say it at the end real quick. I didn't want to dwell on it. I don't know how you get, but yes, this week it's our double yesterday Joe's birthday. Yeah. Oh, baby, how you doing, birthday boy? Oh, Gomez, you know why we're doing this episode when we are doing this episode? Because I'm on vacation, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. I love to hear that. I'm what, are you, out. What, are you, what are you doing? I'm going to Budapest. Oh, that's so nice this time of year I hear. Yes, so <laughs> this episode is being recorded a couple days early because I am somewhere far, far away, doing European pornography. Oh, babe. What a birthday bash. <laughs> ah, come blow out this candle, baby girl. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm just doing my electro everywhere I go. It's my birthday. <laughs> we love that. Man, for such a shitty movie, we talk about a lot. <laughs> yes, we talk about a lot of shitty movies, but that's one of them. <laughs> yeah, so it's my birthday. I'm on vacation. We're recording a little early, so hopefully these things won't seem too far out of date, but obviously we'll be back to our regular recording schedule next week. But we could not leave you without an episode this no. week, as always, because what do we know about us, Gomez? No days off. Is that what we do? No, 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 no. We always What's deliver. Was... Oh, we always deliver. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know we do. Our things. <laughs> So thank you guys for listening to the Car Jomez podcast. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Guys, if you could be bothered, please take a couple minutes. Leave us a five-star review wherever it is that you're listening to this. If this is uh, Apple, if this is Spotify, all that stuff is really appreciated by us and goes a long way into helping us build our algorithm. Uh, It sounds stupid, but it's a nice, free, and easy way to help support the podcast if you enjoy listening. So we would like that. Uh, Follow us along on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, get down, hit that like button, hit the bell. They, They say ring the bell, right? That's what they say on the YouTube, ring the bell. That way you get these notifications when the new videos go up. And then leave some comments as we go along. Chat along with us. Because one of us, Gomez or myself, will always respond. But Gomez, it's my birthday. Didn't get a lot of presents this year. Just a vacation. That's how I'm treating myself. I don't know if it was any good yet. I'm assuming I had a great time. I would hope so. Past Joe is assuming future Joe has a really good time. He's, he's, he's known to have good times, so it's safe to assume, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Joe, listen, uh, since I know you're busy you're on vacation, so I know you probably haven't gotten around to checking out what's going on in the world here. So, Joe, I got to tell you something. You Hit that breaking something. news music. Oh! Breaking news. Uh, Oh, Joe, I got some breaking news for you, Joe. What a dramatic turn of events. <laughs> I was driving home today. Just driving my regular drive home, you know, past the same things, see the same stuff. But as I was driving, something caught my eye. 
as I drove by the McDonald's on their sign, it said, try our new cookies and cream pie. It's out. We could try this now, Joe. Oh, my goodness. I, I still haven't seen it by me. It's still not on the menu. I checked the app. It's in the app. Everything. I was like, where did, the fuck did this did come stop? from? Did I did not stop because I was like, what, what the fuck are see- you doing? <laughs> I, I figured I would go get it tomorrow. You know, Saturday, wake up, get a little cookies and cream pie. I didn't want to turn back. It's a long day. It's hot. It's like 90 degrees this week in New York. I'm tired, bro. I just want to get home and change my clothes and relax. You owe it to the people. You owe it <laughs> to the rock. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. They have a deal. You can get the apple pie and no. the cookies and cream pie. Bullshit. For like That's a, a bullshit a... deal. <laughs> Why is that a bullshit oh, deal? You, Come on. you know what goes well with your cookies and cream? Have you tried apple? Like, no, bro. No. <laughs> it's Keep just like a deal. fruit on the other side of the fucking room. It's like a get dollar out off. Out of don't you I like don't even savings? want that in the same bag with my pie. <laughs> How dare you? Oh, so, folks, if you're out there, be on the lookout for this cookies and cream pot. Let us know. Have you had it yet? Is it good? I'll be back next week, definitely, with a review. I don't know if Joe's going to have time. You should go live on YouTube and, and eat it. I, don't play with me. I'll put it on, do the whole drive and everything. Order it. We'll do the whole thing. Don't play with me, bro. People love we'll live it. videos. You go live, order it up, try it right there. And all the all council right. of Jeffs can watch you and weigh in. Well, now, do I have to wait for this to come out so they could be ready to watch this? Because now it's going to be in the past That's tense. A good I'm going to do it already. Yeah, this, is, <laughs> this is past Gomez talking to future Gomez. What do you think is right? Bro, this multiverse shit is crazy, bro. I don't know what's happening here. It's just everywhere. <laughs> But that's how you know we've got our fingers on the pulse because we're also doing the multiverse. We can't we can't let it go by us, bro. Everybody's doing it. Come on. That's what they say. They say Captain Shoes and the multiverse of mediocrity. <laughs> oh man, Joe, I could give you another breaking news story. You want another one? I don't have to hit the music again, do I? No, you don't gotta hit the music again. Okay, good. But this too, I figure this is something we should talk about. Joe. The honky talk man is no longer the greatest intercontinental <laughs> champion of Whoa, all time. Hold the wheel <laughs> right there, Pat Sage. What, what, we what got I time still... for another round. <laughs> he is still the greatest intercontinental champion of all time. He's just no longer the longest reigning oh, intercontinental champion I... of all time. But he is still the greatest. My bad, Honky. My apologies to you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean no disrespect. Honky, you called him Honky? Well, that's his Mr. Tonk. Mr. Tonk. You think he likes that? Honky or Mr. Tonk? (laughs) Excuse me, Tonk. I I don't know if he likes that. Mr. Tonk, man. (laughs) It's hyphenated. It's hyphenated. Oh, goodness. Boy, your other boy, but it's it's nice, right? It's a good transition from your old boy to your new boy, Walter. I right? like it's kinda, Gunther. It's great. Ever since I've seen Gunther, I'm like, this is a guy right here. <laughs> this guy's going places. <laughs> you know, they had they had some trouble at first because they couldn't think of a good name for him, but once they did, he's been off to the races. It's been gangbusters. Yeah, I mean, you're not lying. He's been having a hell of a run up there, bro. You people I think I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know wrestling. I am the wizard of wrestling, the nobleman of knowledge. I know stuff about things. Always. Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> I love it. All right, so there you go. I had some news. You got news? That was my news. I figured I'd mix it up a little bit. Throw some I shit mean, away. I appreciate you doing that. That was a nice change of pace here. And there are but, stuff uh, you like. Yeah, these are. I, I like so many things. But Gomez, <laughs> hit the breaking news music. Oh! Breaking news. 
Oh, man. What's going on in your world, bro? Michael, Jonathan, Gomez, I could not go one episode with not having you hit my music for me because it's my my phrase. It's my catchphrase, right? Sure. So let's talk about some things. Uh, Netflix, this week, yesterday, actually, September 13th, the beginning of my Jackie Robinson year, mm. they've come out with a new show on the streaming platform called Wrestlers. Oh, what the fuck is this? This is seven episodes about legendary wrestling alliance, Ohio Valley Wrestling, as run by Al Snow. And this is going to oh. tell us everything we need to know about Ohio Valley Wrestling. Gomez, are you excited for a reality wrestling show with Al Snow? I mean, wait, is is this like a – this is a like a show that's happening now? Not like it's the a, old, like, let's look back? No, I, this is a docu-series oh, about current day OVW. No, 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 no. Where Al, Al Snow is the actual owner of OVW. Oh, okay. I get. I, I'm, I'll say I'm slightly interested. I was more interested when I thought we were doing like a all oh, OVW was the shit back in the day. I thought yeah, that. Like oh, was. let let's talk about when John Cena and Batista, yeah, and like Randy shit Orton, like that. Yeah, and H two O Ron Waterman were there. That's that's. I got excited for that. This one, I guess it's cool. I like Al Snow. He's cool. Um, yeah. I, I'm not going to say I'm interested. I watched the trailer for it. There's like a two and a half minute trailer. If you guys haven't seen it yet, it's building you up. It's like, oh, Ohio Valley wrestling. This is where John Cena came from. This is where oh, Batista came from. It's like, me. bro, it's it's not that anymore. And ain't no one come out of OVW in a very long time. I was going to ask, how long has that it's still been around for a while? Ohio Valley's never stopped. At one point oh. after WWE dropped it, it became the developmental for Impact for a while. And it was like, oh, here's Jesse Neal. I was going to say, have they produced anything since then? Like, what's the biggest? I can't think of anyone who's come out of OVW in a very long time. Mm, that's sad. That's not good. Why would you keep going? <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. And remember, we just had recently the Apple TV series of um, yes. Monster uh, Factory. Monster Factory. Yeah, it's kind of got boring. Never finished it. Never have felt the interest to go back. So I'm kind of nervous that this is going to be along the same lines. I could see that definitely. I mean, it's interesting. It's it's a cool idea. It's cool to Netflix getting in the wrestling game, and that's yeah. Cool. And also, next week they've got a new season of Love Is Blind coming out. Oh snap! What a birthday present! A great birthday present for me. But in addition to Love Is Blind. When you look at all their coming soon type of things, there's really not a lot that appeals. There's an awful lot of true crime out there. And I understand that there's a market for true crime. I, I Believe me, I get it because I watch a decent amount of it myself. It's just the, we're, the pickings feel awfully slim right now on Netflix. Uh, I feel it all the time. I mean, when's the, I don't even want. I can't say when's the last time they had a hit show. Uh, they don't really hasn't really happened. I feel in a long Fubar? time. Like, but I don't even feel like that was even, a hit. Was that popular? That's what I mean. Like, what's the last time a we Netflix liked it, show? But when when was the last time something really broke? A through? new like a new thing too. Like yeah. obviously, Stranger Things is gonna be popular when it comes back, and You is popular when it comes back. Shit like that. But when's the last time they had something pop off like that? That everyone was like, oh, shit, you watching this show? I feel like it's been a while. I could be it wrong. Really Maybe I'm forgetting something that slipped through our cracks or something. But I feel like people ain't talking about Netflix shit. Uh, in addition to that, Gomez, you know what else is back right now? You may be lucky enough to find it on your shelves. Mm, what's that? I know you're a guy in the market for these always. Red Velvet Oreos, Gomez. Ooh. Oh, I love when they bring back the good ones. Mm. So Red Velvet Oreos are a fan favorite, so to speak. Yes, they're good. Yeah, very much so. Those should be back on shelves now. You just got to find them. I got to say, they brought the s'mores back this summer. I got it one time and then I can never find it again. It was so upsetting because one of my favorites and I just it was non-existent. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Bro. I wonder if it's just like a limited quantity. Like they just like put they out even, a they don't yeah, they don't pump it out. They ordered one case of it or whatever. 
Kind of like those it. Captain Joe shoes, Major Bendy's figures, no longer available at MajorPopMerch.com. God damn! You make a certain sad. amount, and once they sell, they sell. I'm gonna be like those major marks. Then I'm angry. I yeah. thought I had more chances to get it. <laughs> uh, this past Tuesday, Gomez Wendy's has a, put out their pumpkin spice frosty and their frosty cream cold brew. Are you interested in either one? Definitely not the cold brew. I mean, uh, I don't know. I might try the frosty, but you know, pumpkin's not my shit like that. Like I said, we mentioned yeah. I have a pumpkin beer once or twice. It's not bad, but like to go out of my way to get pumpkin drinks and shit. Nah, I'm not. I don't think so. And last but not least, you know what is happening this week, Gomez? It's a very big birthday, a milestone birthday for one of our double main men. Yeah, I know you. Who, who else were we talking about here? Maybe even slightly more important than me. What? It is the 75th birthday of Chester Cheetah. Oh, I heard about this, bro. I heard about this. And you, yes, you, can celebrate with a piece of Cheetos milk bar cake made from our friends at Milk Bar. They ship nationwide. Yeah, bro. I went online. I said, bro, I got to get this, this cake. I got to get it. $62 for this fucking Isn't cake, it bro. Really? And I don't know if that includes shipping. The shipping, so, yeah. So I said, I guess I'm not having that fucking thing. <laughs> it was very upsetting. I was like, oh, man, it sounds a Cheetos cake. Oh, what's this? A couple of our friends went to the city. I guess they did a, a thing, and they got to try it. They said it wasn't bad, yeah. I was like, oh, man. Just, if you're interested, you could check them out on Instagram at Milk Bar Store, I believe. Milk is Bar is handle. great. I love Milk Bar. I've I never had it. anything by them. Their cake is great. Um, their cookies are great. Now, I don't know about you guys, where you guys live, but me in New York, uh, I could get Milk Bar ice cream and like ShopRite and Stop and Shop. Oh wow! I don't know if it. I don't know if it's just a local thing because it's New York. I think easy, so because but... they do have a New York location. They have New York, yeah, LA. that's their main. Yeah, New York's their main thing. So uh, I don't know, but if you could get it, this the, the ice cream is great. They make great flavors. The whole really? thing is cereal. The whole their whole thing is cereal milk. That's their that's their gimmick. So it's it's good. I'm telling you. Trust me. I know a thing or two about cereal. <laughs> Uh, so that's mm. it for the news, Gomez. One thing I want to talk about very mm. briefly. Two weeks ago, I spoke about the show on HBO Max it's called Telemarketers. And yes, you there did. was a third episode that I was refusing to watch. Uh, our double main man, John Delena, who recommended it, was like, oh, you got to watch the third episode. It's crazy. Like, just just put yourself through it. And you know what, John? I tried. And after the uh. first six minutes... Of it just being this, I was like, nope, 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 not doing this today. And I shut that shit off and I said, never again. Never again will I be swayed by the words of John Delena. Never oh, again no. will I <laughs> oh, be no. enticed to watch fucking telemarketers. Not happening. Not doing it. Oh. End of story. I was, there was no shot. I was watching, I didn't watch number two. Definitely ain't even try. Get out of here. I've, I've heard, but this is the thing. We're in the minority here. People are loving this show. All I hear is praise. You got to watch this. This telemarketer is crazy. This, who can, It's a bunch of jerk offs. Just, I don't, what, what's the appeal? I don't understand it. I don't get it. I really just don't get it. People being pieces of shit. All right. This guy could, he gets high and he makes some sales. Good for him. I do a lot of things high. So, what, what, where's my medal? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that world? Your goal has a medal. <laughs> oh man, it's a fun show already, Joe. I'm we just getting started. <laughs> oh man, I watched uh, I watched a few things this week, Joe. You uh, did you get to watch some it. stuff? Uh, mm. Really, just uh, one or two other things. Mm, all right, I watched. Uh, 
I watched a stand-up show, a stand-up Netflix comedy special. This is uh, one people have been talking about. Um, I don't know if you remember this. A couple of years ago, SNL made some uh, some announcements of some people they signed or whatever. And one of them was this guy named Shane Gillis. And within an hour or two of the announcement that he was signed, he had been he let fired, go of right? his contract he because he got canceled because he has a podcast and he said some things. I don't fucking know. And so people went crazy. And so I got to be very not- careful with my Tony Khan <laughs> comments going forward. Apparently. <laughs> apparently. Mm. So uh, I guess he's been laying low. I think he still does his podcast, does some comedy. But so he got a Netflix special. I said, let's see what this guy is all about. Right. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, I say for the first half, it was very hit or miss for me. I was like, eh, you know, I laughed and I didn't laugh. And I didn't laugh. And then about halfway through, he just kind of, I don't know, it gets in a rhythm and just starts so talking about topics I care about. I don't know. I can't explain it. But I had some some really good laughs there. He does a, a great, like an amazing Donald Trump. Like it's like on point. Like I know a lot of people do a Donald Trump. But like this was one of those, you close your eyes and it's him. The, everything is perfect. And uh, he had some jokes, bro. So um I guess some people might find some offense to some of his stuff, right? Like, he's not like, like a, I don't want to say like a Joe Rogan like that. But, you know, someone who just says whatever, right? So this guy, he says some things and you might go, oh, you know. But for the most part, it's not like that. But he does mention, uh, he says the word retarded a few times, right? And then he explains it's because, you know, oh, I have a lot of Down syndrome in my family. Down syndrome in my family, you know. And he starts telling Down syndrome jokes, but like you know, light hard, like nice, like not making fun of them, just telling stories. Because if you ever met someone, them. yes, exactly. Because if you ever met someone with Down syndrome, you yeah. know, they're usually very nice, sweet, like they're fun people to be around. You know, they're having the best times. So he tells some jokes. One of the jokes he told that I just had to tell you, and it was amazing. He said Down syndrome people love two things: they love titties. And they love John Cena. And it was <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> I was dying, bro. I'm like, do we all have Down syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got was. me pegged. <laughs> oh, man. I, so I, I may need to consult my <laughs> medical professional right now. It was fun. It was just good. So, like, he just – he won me over at the end, and uh, I thought it's worth checking out. Nice, easy 50 minutes, in and out. I I think it's harmless. You know, it's good. Check it out. Shane Gillis, Netflix. It'll pop up on your uh, top ten and all that fun shit. Uh, Let's stick with wrestling now since you mentioned John Cena. There is a new documentary over on the Peacock Network called Angle, and it is a nine-hour documentary – about the life and times of Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle, who, by the way, also happened to be in the WWE at one point. And it does take a while to get there, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, I don't mind. I thought it was interesting, but it was like he was just an Olympic wrestler for a long time in this doc. And in all honesty, I did find now, in truth, this is about an hour and 40 minutes. Yes, an hour 47. But it does feel. It, you get a very in-depth look at his story of falling in love with amateur wrestling, playing other sports as a youth and his build into becoming an Olympic champion and everything that went into that and his broken neck and the stories behind that. And it's very, very interesting. It's very good. And the people that they got to be in this story, I thought were all great. All the people really had good things to offer as far as their, their tidbits and their stories. And it's just, after you hit the Olympic thing, it feels like a race to the finish to cover his professional wrestling days. It's true. And it's it like, is. oh, well, yeah, here, here, here's his match against Sean Stacey. There's a montage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here's a montage of matches. It's like, it is. It's very weird how they went about that. I will say. Um, I think it's very good. It's very entertaining. It's probably one of the better documentaries WWE has done in some time. You guys already know how I feel about the Cody Rhodes one that came out recently. Uh, so no need to dive into that. But I think it's really good because there's a lot in there that I didn't know before. Um, yeah. Especially because of his Olympic background and his amateur background stuff. And we all know, like, he won the gold medal. But the severity 
I don't yeah. think has ever been really impressed upon us. Like, hundred percent. Like, We've heard yeah, the story, it's a broken but like, neck, but yeah. Like, do you realize like how bad this was? And it's like knowing full well at any moment he could be fucking paralyzed, and he's just like, I don't give a shit. It's worth it. Like, I gotta try. And it's just like, yikes, my god. That's I, how it is, right? You get one shot. Like, no, you, know, I, you I, might I, never get I there. I get again. the mindset. I get right? the mindset like it's, like completely. It's crazy to but have to I, make that choice. Is crazy to be put in that <laughs> and knowing what you've already given up to get to that point. That's why, I, right? I mean, oof. I'm glad I'm not in the situation where I got to make a decision, like, because I, I don't think I would have the balls to do what Kurt Angle did for the, for that one shot. I really don't. Nice maybe I'm crazy. a coward, but at the same time, maybe I'd like to walk too. <laughs> and he does. He he could barely move. This poor man. Now I will say, shape. there's one line in particular in this movie that got me absolutely fucking infuriated. Oh, and here happened? comes fucking old man Jim Ross. Oh. <laughs> and he has like a throwaway line at one point where he says something to the effect of, oh, and there was that debacle of his TNA run, meaning Kurt Angles. And it's like, bro, number one, like, can we be fucking done with Jim Ross, please? Like, enough is enough with Jim fucking Ross. I know a lot of people want to go out there and complain about Cornette. I know a lot of people want to go out there and complain about Vince Russo. You know who I want to be done with? Jim fucking (laughs) Ross. You know why? Because here's a motherfucker that had all the power to do shit and make people and help the business. And he chose not to do it. And he sat around on his fucking ass, just talking about how great he fucking was the whole time until fucking Tony Khan came out of nowhere and threw a fucking God knows how much money at his fucking doorstep. And by that time he's fucking so removed from everything. Doesn't know shit about shit anymore. Doesn't care about shit anymore. Just wants to sit there and tell you fucking stories about fucking Stan Hansen from 1975 anymore. Like, it's like, at what point, what is Jim Ross offering the fucking business anymore? I'll tell you what, it's fucking nothing. Like I get it. I think Anna J looks good too, but I don't, need this old man just telling me how great her ass is every time she's on fucking tv at some point it's fucking creepy that's the time we live in now (laughs) it's this is not fucking jerry lawler 30 years ago telling me he likes trish stratus i get it but times have changed and maybe we need to be fucking done with jim ross too because attempting to call Kurt Angle's TNA run a debacle. And I understand maybe it didn't do massive box office and it didn't make TNA a fucking legitimate number two competitor. But Kurt Angle was in fucking TNA having fucking bangers. And Some I'll be the greatest the, I'm, matches. I am one of the last people to ever defend anything Joe about fucking TNA. Wrestling. <laughs> Joe like, loves TNA. <laughs> but like, let's call a spade a spade here. Kurt Angle was there doing programs with fucking AJ Styles and Samoa Joe and Christian and getting these guys over and making them bigger stars and getting them ready to go work other places. Kurt Angle was having fucking banger matches with these guys. Mm -hmm. So let's not sit there and act like this was a debacle because Jim Ross, Jim Ross, I like lost respect for Jim Ross years ago when before they had the WWE Network, they had WWE 24-7, and yes. it was a subscription-based service, and every month you'd get, like, say, six or eight new shows. And one of the yeah. shows they would put on was called, uh, like, Legends of Wrestling, and it was a roundtable discussion round table. Yeah. with Jim Ross and Pat Patterson and Michael Hayes, and then they'd bring in, like, Roddy Piper one month or Dusty one month. And at one point they were talking about celebrities in wrestling. And Jim Ross went on a rant about how Cindy Lauper added nothing to the business. And here I look at it and I go, Uh-oh. you Uh-oh. dumb Uh-oh. bastard. Uh-oh. Like, how fucking dare you? How fucking dare you? Because Cindy Lauper was one of the biggest fucking stars in popular culture in the mid 80s and her being on the war to settle the score and her taking hulk hogan to the fucking grammy awards and her showing up at wrestlemania was a big fucking deal her putting captain lou albano in her girls just want to have fun music video her doing the song for the goonies that feature fucking half the wwf roster 
this is fucking inane. Inane. And someone should have stood. Pat Patterson knows. Pat Patterson was there. Roddy Piper was on that panel. She made Roddy Piper when he, she allowed him to kick her in the fucking head and get that fucking heat. And not one of them. Maybe it was edited really? out. Really? I was going to say, I can't believe out. Piper didn't say nothing. But they know <clears throat> what Cindy Lauper meant to that fucking angle. And they know what Cindy Lauper meant to the creation of WrestleMania. And they should all be smacked in the fucking mouth for acting. You know, like I said, maybe it was edited out, but fuck Jim Ross and fuck Jim Ross forever. Fuck him. We need to be done with this idiot. Go back to fucking Oklahoma, sell your fucking mustard and go back into seclusion. Write a book every once every couple of years, but fuck off. Like we do not need you around here anymore. <clears throat> I won't say it as angry, but yeah, I've, I've had enough of Jim Ross on AEW. He, he adds nothing. He's very slow. He's very mumbled. It's it's not good. It's what, is he, up, bro. Like, what is he adding to the product except that, does it. you know, 25 years ago, I was really good. Yes. And he was fought like when AEW first started, he wasn't bad. But, you know, that's four or five years ago. You know, he's had some health decline. You know, it's rough sometimes listening to Jim Ross doing commentary. Look, and, and I'm not wishing ill on Jim Ross. Oh, no. no. I'm, I'm really not. There are people that I do wish ill on. Jim Ross is not one of them. But it's just that we don't need him in this spot anymore. There are a lot of other people that can do the job much more competently at this point than Jim Ross. It's not a question of age. It's a question of talent. Jim Ross is not that talent anymore. And we can go ahead and remember Jim Ross for what he was. That's fine. The same way we remember ex-athletes for what they were. I love Ken Griffey Jr. You know what? I don't think of Ken Griffey Jr. now as a 60-year-old man and say, man, I wish he was still playing. No, I'm quite glad I'm watching Julio Rodriguez right now instead of Ken Griffey Jr. in today's world, as cool as that might be just to see sure, one time in a home run derby yeah. or something. Sure, yes. Yeah, but like that, but at the sure. same time, like – I don't remember Ken Griffey Jr. for the end of his career on the Chicago White Sox when he no. fell asleep in the clubhouse and couldn't pinch hit. I remember him for when he was the man. And Jim Ross is doing nothing but sullying his own reputation right now. And I understand. Maybe, like, I get it. You want to be out of the house. You want to be active. You want to be busy. This isn't the place for you anymore. Go find something else to do. I love it. <laughs> like, like, let's call spade a spade. That's you uh, know, listen, and the thing is, is we get in this, no, and, and we get in this thing like where we think anyone in wrestling has to wash their mouth, and and they're believe me, with as much as I say, they're still when we go back and I've listened to the episode, I'm like, ah, I don't know if I should say that. You know, I have friends that work for these companies, and I go, Oh, not that they've told me, not that I've I've never had a conversation with any of my friends where it's like hey, man, like, you really shouldn't say this. You really shouldn't say this. But the fact of the matter is, it's still, I don't ever want it to get to the point where I say something that and gets out there, trouble, and then my yeah. friends start getting questioned about it. Like, hey, don't you yeah. know that guy? Like, yeah, that's not, not what friend, I'm trying yeah. to do. But at the same time, like, let's take a realistic look at the business here. And what, it, like, if, if you took Jim Ross off TV today, does anyone even fucking notice? No. No. Of course not. No, no, they already have five guys in the booths. Like, we don't need, <laughs> we don't need another one. Oh man, Jim, who knew Jim, who knew Jim Ross was gonna catch it today, folks? Fuck, <laughs> enough is enough. Oh, so that angle, doc, huh? <laughs> hey, I, it's long. Good. Um, I, I wish we could almost split it into parts. I would have liked to, yes. If we would have done it like, like the that. Arnold documentary that Netflix did where it was three parts, like, oh, here's Arnold the athlete, here's Arnold the actor, here's Arnold the politician, maybe we could do Angle the, uh, the amateur, Angle the WWE guy, and then maybe have that second part be like kind of a longer version of his initial WWE run. And then I know we can't do the TNA stuff, but maybe do, a, do his – his you rehab do stuff. His rehab, uh, him going to Japan, back. him doing the indies for a while. Yeah. Remember, he was taking coming indie bookings. To Hall and of then, fame. you know, everything coming back. Maybe we could have done it like that. Maybe made the episodes yeah. an hour each, you know. Sure. And just, yes. I, I think it might have played a little bit better there. But like I said, the initial part with the amateur stuff is very interesting. 
but it does feel like once you get to the WWE stuff, it is almost like a, a race and trying to finish it up as quickly as we possibly can. It is just bang, bang. It's broken neck, broken neck, broken neck. I'm on drugs, rehab, <laughs> and the doc. Uh, I will and here's, say- here's Stone Cold putting a tiny cowboy hat. <laughs> I will love the doc ends on a TNA clip. I love it. It ends with Kurt Angle climbing the, the cage. And you can see yes, the TNA doing buckle. The- yeah, and you can see. I believe it's Mr. Kennedy on the floor, and he's climbing the top of the cage to do the moonsault. I was like, "What an interesting! Why would they pick? Like, it was so weird." But I was like, "I and love it." Is, TNA. If they got the rights to use that footage there, why wouldn't you talk more about the TNA run? Yes. Like, let him talk about working with Joe or AJ, and you know, AJ's still in the company. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's true. You could talk about some of those people who are there. You know, talk about main event mafia stuff. Main event mafia. No, nah, we're good. We don't need that. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> oh man. Oh, what else I watch here? I watched uh oh real fast. I watched this movie on Hulu. It's uh, it's called Miguel Wants to Fight. It I've is heard about uh, this. It's uh, written by Shea Serrano, very famous internet uh, person, oh. and uh, uh oh, and Jason Concepcion, another internet famous person. They co-wrote the movie. Uh, it's about a kid who uh, is about to move, and so he wants to get in his first fight before he moves. That's basically the gist of it. And uh, I thought it was great. I thought it was funny. Uh, it had one of the biggest laughs I had all year, actually. I wasn't expecting really? that from this movie, but there's a point in this movie uh, when he's trying to start a fight with someone and the shit that gets said in the situation was just hysterical. It was great. And uh, I just thought the the characters, they're all like, uh, it's like a cute movie. It's very sweet. It's about friendship. It's about four friends trying to you know help each other out and uh, get in a fight here. So it was really good. It's on Hulu. It's about an hour and like 17 minutes. It flies by. Maybe it's too short. Maybe things are happening a little too fast, but I don't mind it. But I can see it being a complaint. But uh, definitely check it out. Miguel wants to fight. It's, it's a good time. I'm I'm very uh, surprised by that because I find Shea Serrano to be unbearable. I'm uh, very hit or miss with Shea Serrano. Sometimes I love him and sometimes he's too much. Like, I get it. You're, you're a weird guy, but it's like, all right. <laughs> we got it. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> And uh, something else I watched, Joe. I don't know if you've been catching up. Have you been catching up on Ahsoka? Because the last time we talked, it's been two it's, episodes since then. So it's a good thing I I have been following along because there was a big to-do about this last week's episode, wasn't there? Mm, episode four. Yes, there was. So we are now halfway through this run of Ahsoka. Yes, eight episodes. Feels like we just started, but we're halfway. Uh, by the time oh, you yeah. listen to this, episode five is out. Be- yeah, but, five. You know, we're always a week behind over here. We like yes. to give you guys time to catch up. You got to watch it before we can talk about it. A hundred percent. Now, you and I both thought the first two episodes were rather slow. It's okay, yes. It wasn't anything special. It's, and thing, the way things have gone since in the following two episodes, I'm kind of in the same place I was after two episodes. Uh, Where, I enjoyed it some more. I will say the last these last two episodes, I enjoyed more than the first two. See, but it furthers my argument that I don't think we're seeing Grand Admiral Thrawn until bro, you bro. done it now. You bro, done I and s- made a big mistake. When episode four ends, I'm like, yo, this guy's really showing up in like episode six or seven, bro. Like we're getting like bare minimum. Like he's coming to set up either season two or this movie that's going to fucking get made in seven years or whatever bullshit. Like, I'm just like, you got to be kidding me, bro. But so, I thought episode four was a banger. I thought it was very good. I think Ray Stevenson is fantastic. Such a shame. I think so he's I think such a great character here. I agree. This was the best episode that has been out yet. Um but I also think they're trying to hit you with that bit of holy shit, I can't believe they do that with the final scene. Yes, of course. It and is. I don't necessarily want to spoil what the final scene is right now, just in case people are a little bit behind, but it has been all over the internet. 
So Solo, that's hard to ignore. It, I mean, it, it was, and even like I watched it that night that it came out and I hadn't been spoiled. And I made a point of texting Gomez to say, hey, don't know where you're at with Ahsoka, but you may want to watch it as soon as possible before it gets spoiled for you. Yeah, it didn't get spoiled. I stayed away and I watched it the next day. I watched the, because I was too behind. I didn't watch three or four. Three was okay. Had some interesting stuff. The, you know, fighting in the space I thought was kind of cool, but nothing nothing else. And then I thought episode four was good. There was some good uh, saber fight, uh, saber, lightsaber fight scenes and stuff like that. And I was into it. I'm excited to see where it goes from here because, uh, like, what, what's happening? You know, they got the map now. So I guess we got to chase these people now. Like, what, what direction is the show going to go in now? Uh, my biggest thing was the false finish of Ahsoka being dead. Like, it's her. Sh- we, we know she's not dead. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I just figured she got fucked up. I never even thought for a second she was dead. You know what I mean? No, and that's the thing is like, I guess the point is you're supposed to think that because when um, Sabine sees her get knocked off the cliff and yeah. she's underwater and she's gone, like, what what else are you supposed to think? Like, oh, she's she's dead. But it's like, no, like at no point is Ahsoka dying in this in episode four of season one of this show. Like, yeah. so it's just I don't know how you get to the point where they bring us to the end of that episode without something like this. But I just don't think conceptually it makes a lot of sense. Hmm. Some but I did I... think the, the some of the fighting was cool. I thought we got that that scene with Ray Stevenson with uh, Ahsoka, and then eventually uh, with the other two girls uh, off on their own having their own fight. It was yeah. a pretty cool scene. But once again, are we really seeing anything? We're so overexposed to Star Wars at this point. There's just been so much that nothing really feels overly new or captivating or remember the first time we saw the clip from the phantom menace where darth maul unleashes the double-sided lightsaber and every single person in the world collectively shot a wad in their in their shorts hardest dick ever just instant boom it was one of the most instant holy shit moments because Yes, no, it we, was. We we all know we all know what that motherfucker got like, two. He what? got it on both. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> and now, um, like when you see like Ray Stevenson's gimmick, where it's like a circle and it spins around, yeah. it does. And yeah, it's cool. But we've seen all this. We've seen General Grievous have six of these things at once. <laughs> yes, he does. He spins them. <laughs> so it's just. It's not that it's bad. It's just that it doesn't feel fresh. So then I, but this, see, this I gotta say to you is watch Andor. Andor is the freshest take on Star Wars you're gonna see. Yeah. It's so different from everything. That's why that got me loving Star. Like, oh man, this, like, it got me, oh, it got me like that feeling that I haven't had in a long time for Star Wars. And you just can't do it. See, but now this is the bigger issue, I think. So we're already with the the cutbacks at Disney. We see Disney stock going in the toilet. We're about eighty dollars a share right now, down from a high of about one hundred and ninety plus a big drop per share about a year ago. So huge drop. Park attendance is down. Movies are down. Yes, Mm. Um, everything in Disney is down. And one of the biggest devourers of the Disney dollar right now is the Disney Plus. Uh, streaming platform we've already taken the marvel shows out of the equation for the most part we're getting loki season two we're obviously not going to get another secret invasion we're not going to get another uh captain america and the winter what Soldier. if season two comes out christmas time that's that's the that's the thing now we're getting a so, what but, if so now two. we're just getting the, whatever was already done we're going to get the what's the echo i know they said they're just going to drop all at once just because it's done that's pushed back um, to april but once again, this is something that they know is terrible. So they're yeah. not even going to space it out week no. to week. They're just dropping it all at once just to do something with it. With Star Wars, we, we've hit that point, And with Marvel, too, where Marvel peaked at uh, Endgame there. Star Wars, we've, we've just seen enough. I've, I truly believe that we've seen enough. And I understand that you can't just shut off the franchise for a while, right? 
But isn't that what makes you want more of it? At some point, Mark- if you have Star Wars every couple of months at your disposal, and not even like real Star Wars, and not even like really thought out Star we're getting eight episodes of Ahsoka here. And Ahsoka is a character that I genuinely enjoy and care about. But even I'm going here like, I really don't know if we need to I'll watch it because it's there. And the ratings appear to be pretty good. The, the amount of people watching this show compared to the other shows that have been out in the past couple of times. Mandalorian viewership has gone down a lot. Book of Boba Fett viewership was down considerably. Andor wasn't even up to that. The Marvel shows no. were terrible. A Secret Invasion was absolutely awful, they said. So if these shows are, not, are going to cease to exist at some point, or we drop them down to where we're only getting one Star Wars show a year or every two years, what is the purpose of Disney Plus at this point? There is none. I say it all the time. I'm, I'm probably going to cancel it after Ahsoka. Uh, maybe I'll wait till, uh, till low-key and then I'll cancel it. But, I mean, I haven't watched anything on Disney Plus I guess Andor, and then I haven't watched anything since Ahsoka now, and I won't watch it anything till Loki, and then that's it. I don't go back and watch Disney movies like that. Silo's and not into Disney movies like that, you know. So when you brought that up a couple weeks ago, we spoke about that. I asked if you were having, if it was easy to get your daughter to watch the classic Disney films that, like you yeah. and I, would have grown up with, and you said no, it's not. And you kind of got her, you got kind of got to bribe her, or sweeten the pot. Yeah. Hey, you know, mommy loved this as a kid. Yeah. Why don't you? And yeah. it makes me think, you know what? This is a problem with the theme parks as well. When Maybe. you brought your daughter here for her birthday in March, she was definitely happy to be there and she was having a good time, but there were none of the characters that she wanted to meet. There were none of the characters that she, in her movies, in her Disney yes. movies. Yes. You know, and is that a problem with the parks at this point? Because now the appeal for someone like me to go to Disney World is I did this as a kid. It's the nostalgia. I went on this ride. My dad took me here. I remember sitting on that bench. But those are all characters that basically I had grown up with. You know, it was always Mickey Mouse. It was uh, when I got to meet even uh, who would I got to meet Roger Rabbit at one point. Like I saw him there and I waved, you know, Goofy was there. At MGM Studios, the Ninja Turtles came by one time. Love but for, for newer aged, for, for younger children now going to Disney, the newest character might be Stitch. Yeah, and, well, I guess, you know, they got Frozen. Frozen be the only thing. Yeah. But that's about it. That's that's the most recent thing that, you know, people would. You know, we are getting for. the Moana thing coming up this fall. Uh, sure. They are making a Princess and the Frog. They're they're retheming Splash Mountain yeah. to be Tiana's. But even that's adventure. old. That's that's but even, even old now. I was gonna say, but even that's old now. And I understand that these things take time sure. to build or imagine or sketch and everything. Yeah. There's a lot of time that goes into that. So by the time you actually do get something up and running, it is kind of outdated already. Yeah. But how do we put that in there where? Like Frozen needed to become such a monster of a Phenomenal. property yes. that it didn't matter when you got it out as long as you got it yes. out. Yes, yes. Frozen is everlasting now. Yes, it's reached that point. But yeah, that's the thing is things get popular, but they don't always hit that that thing. You know, Encanto hit a thing, but it doesn't mean Encanto in five years yeah. is still a thing, you know, but then you build an Encanto thing and, you know. And it's the same thing even with Avatar. The first movie comes out as a massive hit. They decide they're going to build an Avatar world yeah. at Animal Kingdom. It and comes it out 10 years, years another move. <laughs> after the fact. And then a part two comes out years even after yeah. that. So I, I go to the Avatar place now and I'm like, do people even really care about this? I can't believe Like when I've heard of it, I was like, oh, there's an Avatar. Like, I, like what? Like I forget because, you know, you don't think of that as being a Disney thing like that, you know? So but yeah, we got Disney Plus. Really, nothing going on. Netflix no. is a land of true crime at this point. I Who is where you go stuff. for the network shows? If there's nothing going on there now, and there's nothing going on there at at this point, take out take the writers and actors strikes out of the equation here. Are we about to revert back to the cable system? 
I was definitely coming that way, especially because of this strike, because of that. You know, uh, they got to make changes. Uh, Warner Brothers just said uh, they said they're losing about three hundred million because of this strike this year, mm-hmm. and all the writers are asking for is forty million dollars from them. So they're willing to lose a lot, a lot, lot more. A just multiple, to prove, uh, just, just, you know, yeah, five times. But like, who knows what that end number is going to be by the time the strike does end, right? And it's just, it's just amazing to see that, that just the greed is just, it's going to come crashing down, and it already has. You know, the Disney CEO, you know, he's back here, and he's what's he saying? He goes, we're going to pump the brakes on on TV shows, but it's the truth. Why are we spending two hundred and fifty million on Secret Invasion? How much money is that bringing in? You know, it just doesn't. Things don't add up. You, you said you put it to the movie theaters because you hope you can make that money back. But everybody's got fucking Disney, bro. How many new? That's the thing too. They always want new subscribers every every quarter. How many people are supposed to subscribe to your business every year throughout the year? We need growth, growth, growth. No, you don't. Like that's insane. That's not like what? What? What do you think this is? There, there is a finite amount of people out there who are going to subscribe to Disney. Yes, and they're and usually going to do it when it first comes out. Whoever yes. really wanted it is doing Whoever it. Whoever really at wanted the start. it did it day one. They yeah. saw all the movies that they haven't seen in God knows how long. Oh, we watched The Sword in the Stone. We yeah. watched Robin Hood. Oh, we watched Mary Poppins. And then you gave us some cool little shows like Prop Culture, yes. which was a nice look at the behind the scenes stuff of certain movies. You gave us stuff about the Imagineers. That's the kind of stuff. That's I, stuff I can get behind. Be there. Low cost, and, interesting things that wouldn't be like, you know, you're not really going to seek that stuff out. But if it's there, oh, look at this. This is interesting. Now, I understand you're going to have to have new programming to keep people of invested. Yes. But you guys are blowing years worth of budgets on even the most inane shows that yeah. even if you wanted to, you can't make that back on anything. You know, Indiana Jones budget was so high. Like, you could leave that in theaters for the next 25 years. It's not going to make back the budget. Yeah. Secret Invasion in the movie theaters was not making $250 million. No. No shot in hell. Now, turn Secret Invasion into a much tighter cut two-hour movie. Maybe you got something worth a shit. But the way you did it was fucking awful. You had a terrible story. You had terrible actors. You had terrible premise you had stuff people weren't interested in to begin with yes it was a story no one wanted to be told it didn't it didn't matter and and this is where we're at with the marvel end of of disney right now anyway we're getting you gave us when the mcu started you gave us superheroes that you owned because no one else wanted them but you hooked us because you gave us engaging people doing what they did well writing stories that really hadn't been told before in such a manner. Everybody got hooked in and made it appointment viewing. It was appointment viewing when it came out in the theaters. It was appointment viewing when it first got added to Netflix. People would go crazy. Oh, Winter Soldier just got added to Netflix. Got to watch it. Oh, Civil War is on Netflix. Got to watch it. Oh, I put it on before I went to bed. Watch it again. Like, oh, I love that airport seat. Whatever the case may be. When these things would end up on a Netflix, it felt like appointment viewing. After because it was like you already seen it, you loved it, but now it went on the one streaming service everybody had. Now these people have bastardized the streaming services, they've watered it down to where you feel like you don't have anything on any of them. Yeah. And it's one thing when uh, you know, something like Peacock, it's $4.99. I got my my karate Hong Kong channel, it's $3.99. If I don't watch it, I don't feel like, oh, you know, whatever. But when something's $20, you know, it's, it's a bit more. $20, $20, $20. All of a sudden, $60 on these streaming services that I'm not watching. That's a lot of money a month. Yeah. Like if you're if you're spending $20 on ad-free Netflix right now, I, I would hope there's more coming out than really just fucking wrestlers and true crime. Like, what I mean, else is there? That's their thing, right? The documentaries. That's always been a Netflix thing, is the little docu series. So well, I feel like that's keep pumping become, them out. 
that's become the go to for all the exactly yes. that's become the go to for all of these streaming services now yeah. because it's low cost and they can just fill it up and they do get viewers in the same way SVU and syndication always gets viewers. Yes. And exactly. That's something interesting. I want to see a documentary about HQ trivia. Yes, that's interesting. And that's that's the stuff that you're supposed to be uh, putting up there. Not $300 million budget action movies. What are we doing? But still, go back to that Gray Man movie with Chris Evans. If you put that in theaters, how much does it make? I, I don't know. But it make money, but I don't know. It depends. It's not making three hundred million, though. No, it's not. It's not, T- bro. Did you watch the uh, Wonder Woman had a movie come out like two weeks ago on Netflix? A big action movie. Did Did you even know about it? Did you what? Did you see anything? Yeah. No. Yeah, I forget the name of it, but uh, it came out. I would say probably what is this September? So the middle of August. And I, uh, and I just went through what's new on Netflix and. Called Heart of Stone came out August tenth, and it's an action-packed spy movie starring Gail Godot. Come on, bro! No one's even heard of this. I'm probably telling people for the first time. That's and I'm that movie's probably a hundred million, two hundred million dollars, right? Of course, unbelievable. And no one even mentioned it once. It's a problem, folks. We're in for. That's what I mean. The strike is just uh, it's just making it happen. Exacerbating faster. problems that have already existed. Next and, year is going to be something. And you and I have been talking about these things. I feel like we almost get repetitive with them sometimes. Yeah. But they keep becoming larger. It's, and what, it's what happening. It keeps happening. It, it, we keep seeing it over and over again, and they they keep getting bigger and bigger. And at some point, you say, "We're two assholes sitting here doing a podcast every week." Just want just want some cool shit to watch and talk about. Yeah. These people who run these companies are lighting money on fire. And that's not how you stay in business. And eventually (laughs) someone's got to, you know, like when I had my Eureka moment last week, Bob Iger or Rupert Murdoch or any of these people in charge of these things has to have a Eureka moment and say, you know what? Spending hundreds of millions of dollars more than we're making is not a good business plan. Let's do something different. And they just seem content to just keep making the problems worse and worse, thinking that their one streaming service is going to assert dominance over the other one. Hey, Joe, you know, uh, Apple TV plus, uh, remember that show after party, right? We liked it. You watched it. Season two's out. You know that? I saw they were coming out with a season two, and I'm just like, why? Season and it was, two. It just, was a fun just little finished, show. I think. It was a fun little show, but like there was no need for some things do not need to go One on. One little forever. story, wrap it up. That's it. Wrap it up. That's what they do, bro. That's what they do. We'll see. Hey, we'll always have something to talk about because they keep fucking up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else so, you got there, Joe? I'm just going into the final thing for the evening. Ooh. It is a rewatch Ooh. of the 1998 comedy masterpiece, Ooh, man. Basketball, starring Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, as they are two childhood friends who become professional athletes in the, in the national sport of basketball, a hybrid of baseball and basketball who must deal with a greedy businessman scheming against their team. Ooh. It's good. It tells you exactly what's going to happen in the movie. Perfect. So go at this point, I think we got to get back in the mindset of 1998 here. Oh, because metal kid time. <laughs> it is very hard. South Park's been around now for a lot of people. South Park has been around since they're born. You know, yes, we're talking don't. about South Park being 25, 26 years old. I think it started in 97. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a point where South Park wasn't just another show. And for a mm-hmm. long time now, it's been just another show. The Simpsons, for a long time now, has been just another show. But there was a time where South Park absolutely ruled 
over the pop culture scene. Insanity, bro. It was, it's insane. To, it's like, think of like Stranger Things, like that kind of just everyone's talking about it. It's on all the shirts, all the things. You can't escape it. It's that kind. It was that kind of popular, which is just like, wow, <laughs> what a show to be that popular. You could have gone out at a certain time and seen, you could have gone to a high school dance and seen people wearing three different shirts. South Park, NWO, or Austin 316. <laughs> and if, if the boys in your school weren't wearing one of those three shirts, they were not good at life. They didn't know what it was to be cool. <laughs> That's a fact of the matter. It's, it's true, bro. <laughs> and in 1998, where South Park is at its peak at this point, to me, I think yeah. the, the zenith of South Park was the initial... Mr. Hanky, the Christmas Pooh episode. Sure. Where I feel like that just was inescapable. It was one of those moments in time that was just completely inescapable. Even your parents knew what it was. Your crazy uncle who only watched Fox News knew what it was. Your grandmother who hasn't changed uh, the channel from CBS for the past 30 years <laughs> knew what it was and didn't like it one bit. Of course and not. <laughs> And here are these two guys, the, the geniuses behind South Park, doing a live-action sports comedy movie. And you look at this and you go, this has got the potential to be fucking huge. <laughs> of course, I would think so. And, but you think about it, like they're relatively new on the scene at this point, right? South Park's only been yeah. around for a year, so it's like, who the fuck are these guys? Where did it's they true. come from? So we get... Trey Parker and Matt Stone, who at this point are both in their late 20s, which is insane to me to even like think about what they were in the, what they were in the middle of accomplishing while in their mid mid to late 20s. And I'm sitting here at 42 just talking about what they did in their 20s. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's like in the movie, they play two childhood friends. They actually met while in college. They went to film school in Colorado together and they ended up becoming friends and they ended up working on um, what be became their first movie uh, Trey Parker wrote called Cannibal the Musical. Fantastic. So good. Now, Gomez, I know you've seen this because I watched it with you. You brought it to my house years and years ago. We watched it after a WWE pay-per-view. Apparently in 1992, Trey Parker was like obsessed with this story about Alfred Packer, who was this um, guy during the pioneer era. He was like a 19th century prospector who was accused of cannibalism. And Trey Parker just had a hard on for the story and decided to write an old school musical about it. Or he wrote like a, a bit thing. And then someone encouraged him to write a full scale musical about it. Wow. Huh. Um, obviously with the help of his buddy, Matt Stone and some other people that they went to school with, they ended up raising about a hundred, hundred grand to put this movie together. They thought they were going to have a deal to, um, they had submitted it to film festivals and stuff, never got any response, but eventually they do end up selling the rights to trauma. Now God we know trauma. I was going to say trauma is the home for a lot of weird shit. <laughs> Weird shit, yes. <laughs> That's uh, a good way to describe it. <laughs> Troma ends up changing the name from Alfred, Alfred Packer the Musical to Cannibal the Musical. I gotta say, when we watched it, I found it... I don't think it's the best thing ever. I think it's definitely entertaining. I think a lot of the songs are good. Songs are great, uh, yeah. I think it's, a, it's actually a fun movie to watch. So if you guys ever want to go back and check that out, believe me, it's... It's definitely worth. We've watched a lot worse things on this podcast. Hundred percent. It's fine, especially if you like musicals and comedy. They do a great job of mixing the two. From there, the guys go on to make what's called the Spirit of Christmas, which is a yes, little short a about. Thing. Well, not yeah. even that. This one was Jesus versus Frosty the Snowman. Oh, the very and, first. Okay. And this was something that they just kind of did on their own with the kind of paper cutout animation that you would see from early South Park. And it doesn't really go anywhere. But while they're really doing this, Trey Parker writes the script to Orgasmo. Now, Orgasmo uh -huh. is the story of a Mormon. He, Trey Parker's always had a hard on for the Mormons. Uh, <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> um, 
he writes uh, Orgasmo. It's the story of a Mormon who becomes uh, an unwilling adult film star. And he's got his sidekick, um, Chota Boy. Once again, it's a movie that I think is a lot of fun. I like it a lot. Gomez, how do you feel about Orgasmo? We love Orgasmo. It's great. It's got some great music in there, too. <laughs> um, while this is going on, this catches on a little bit. It does, you know, get like a real release. So now they're starting to make some connections within the industry, but they they keep getting burned. They keep putting out pilots and stuff that they're filming, thinking they got deals, but they're still living on like each other's floor. It's not going anywhere. They get hired to do another short, um, which they also call the Spirit of Christmas, which becomes the very famous Jesus Christ versus Santa Claus thing. So and they were hired by some executive to create this so he could send it to his friends and family as his holiday <laughs> greeting. That's awesome. <laughs> so this was not something they did for themselves. This was not something they did to try to sell a show. It's something that they were hired to do so someone could send this to his family and friends for their hol his holiday Christmas card. And one of the people who comes into contact with this decides to digitize this uh, oh, film, shit. which is still new in 1996 the uh, the art of digitizing is long gone because we do so much on digital now it used yes. to be as simple as hitting the record button on a computer and letting yeah. this stuff just record but digitizing was a big deal back then not everyone could do it but this goes on to become kind of one of the first viral videos yes it was it was, it was the best we're, we're we're just entering into that time period where Internet speeds are getting to the point where we can kind of watch videos. It used to be ungodly long to sit there and download the large files. Oh. Think, think about it. It used to take you a half hour to download a three-minute song. Yes. So I'm now... excited. Oh, it's only 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, when we used to have the file sharing uh, programs like Kazaa or Napster, you, you would load it up with a bunch of songs that you wanted to download. And go to sleep. And then go to bed. Yeah. Because they weren't going to be done anytime soon. Yep. And while that and was going the on. The first one but, didn't do it. <laughs> while that was going on, your computer was locked up. So you couldn't yeah. do anything else because all your bandwidth was already stretched, my man. Like there was, you you had no options oh, here. So funny. Yes, it's so, all true. <laughs> Spirit of Christmas catches on and they get South Park. But they are absolutely convinced that this show is not going to get picked up. It's not going to get renewed. They've been burned too many times. They're, they just don't believe anything. So they make a deal between Trey and Matt that they are going to take every single offer that comes <laughs> their way in the meantime, because oh, at no point do they believe that South Park is ever going to get renewed, let alone picked up. It ends up basically making Comedy Central. Hell yeah. Comedy Central was a place where you could watch years old Stand comedy up, specials yep. and not yep. all the time very good. Uh, every no. now and then you would get some weird kind of off the hook movie getting replayed with commercials for syndication. Yes. Uh, the Daily Show had just kind of become Still a thing. Was, with, yeah. But Craig that was Kilborn. with Craig Kilborn was the yeah. original host and really Five hadn't. questions. Yeah. But South Park is what puts Comedy Central on the map, and they start marketing it as, you know, the show that the V-Chip was created for. And Gomez, <laughs> do you remember the V-Chip uh, and the, yeah. the hustle and bustle around the V-Chip? Oh, my God. I haven't thought of that in forever, but yeah, right? It was a chip in your TV that was supposed to block out that inappropriate programming. <laughs> it was a way for parents to monitor what their children were watching and, oh and block God. channels the or programs. From, from children being able to access them and watch them. So fun. Before the show even goes live, just on promos alone, Comedy Central sells $100 million in plush uh, dolls and T-shirts. That's pretty crazy. I wouldn't and think that. Wow. $100 million before the show even debuts. The show starts. That goes through the moon. South yes. Park is a hit. And these guys have committed to playing the lead roles in a live-action movie by David Zucker called 
basketball. <laughs> now they were not David the original choice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And David That's Zucker funny. has is behind, you know, he's he's got his fingers yeah. in that comedy spoof genre. Uh, yeah, yeah, we stuff love to him. do with airplane and so this Naked is not gun, uncharted yeah. te- exactly. Naked Gun. This is not uncharted territory for him. But this is a game basketball i mean is a game that he and his friends used to play together Hysteria. so they they created this game he decided at one point that he was going to try to write a tv show about it does not get picked TV up show. so he turns it into a screenplay and his big thing is he wants chris farley to play the main guy okay chris farley has no interest he turns to trey parker and matt stone because all of a sudden they're celebrities because of South Park, and these guys immediately jump on because they, once again, are convinced South Park's not getting picked up. Here we are, twenty <laughs> something years later. South Park is still going. Whenever still going, bro. Like still fucking going. That's funny. So we get Trey Parker in the lead as Joe Cooper, Matt Stone as Doug Reamer, and they are two losers who go to like a somewhat high school reunion. And yeah. everybody there is doing much, much better than them. And they come up with this idea that, well, in order to get chicks, you need jobs. And then once you have jobs, you can get khakis. And then once you have khakis, then you can get the chicks. So it sounds like a good plan, but they're just really lazy. And they come up with this game of basketball as a way to uh, beat two of the uh, jock guys Jocks. at their re- yeah. yeah. The cool polo shirt guys at their high school reunion. <laughs> they realize this game is actually pretty fun. They start expanding on it, fleshing out rules, playing it in their driveway. Other people from the neighborhood, it appears, start jumping in, forming teams, and they have like full scale competition until we get billionaire Ted Denslow, played by hmm. Ernest Borgnine, who is wonderful in this, by the way, uh, sees it, shows up, and says, Hey, I want to make basketball a real thing but I want it to be like the old days of sports where teams couldn't move and players couldn't get traded and money didn't run everything. And people were treated like, and he thinks he thinks. And Trey Parker says indentured servants. And he goes, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's funny because the, the, the movie starts with that, right? Talking about all oh, sports have become this wasteland. And it's funny because this movie is 25 years old. And you would hear someone saying the same shit today about teams moving and the players are greedy. Nothing has fucking changed in sports. Not a damn thing. They talk about the football touchdown celebration. Yes, people celebrated too too much. Yep, it's so Uh, the the teams moving is great because right now you have every team in Major League Baseball feels Mm -hmm. like threatening to move if they don't get some new billion dollar stadium built entirely at the the cost of the taxpayer. So nothing whatsoever so has so changed. Far, was, it like, is absurd. Is... <laughs> and I love when they go, the Lakers move to Los Angeles where there are no lakes. And the Jazz move to Salt Lake City where they don't allow music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to pick on those moments. <laughs> so we get – now. You have to remember, they kind of push the limits on comedy for a while, right? Like what's acceptable, sure. what's not acceptable. They've they've dabbled into the NC-17 aspect at times. Like Orgasmo ended up becoming rated NC-17. Yes. Basically right. because it didn't have a major studio behind it to really fight and push back against the MPAA on that one. When they do South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, the movie, that NC-17. gets threatened with an NC-17 yes, I mean. until, you know... That ended up becoming a thing. And with this, I kind of thought going back to watch this movie 25 years after the fact, there's probably going to be a lot of questionable content in there because I'll be completely honest. I love this movie. I've watched this movie a ton over the years. It's been a while since I've seen it now, but I, this is a movie I quote all the time. I love this movie, but going back into it, I'm like, Ooh, I'm kind of nervous that I'm going to come out of here thinking different about a movie that I have a lot of fond memories about. So, Gomez, tell me your first memories of seeing basketball. Oh, I don't remember. I I, say I, got, I have to say I saw it in the movie theaters because I remember being excited for it. And uh, I remember loving it because uh, I would play basketball all the time. I had a, a hoop 
in my nana's backyard, and we would set up bases, and we would play basketball all the time. It's what we did. We loved to play basketball. So I was, I loved that shit, man. I am shocked that basketball didn't become more of a thing. After Never this became movie. a thing like that, right? I know. And you it's would fun. think like. Like people pay, play Quidditch. You know what I mean? There are full blown yes. Quidditch tournaments in Central yes. Park. But I've never heard, and we had the internet at this point. You know, it's not like this <laughs> yes, is pre internet times. So you could have recruited a basketball league somewhere, I yeah, feel like. Of but it really just never caught on. For me, I did see this movie in theaters, but I saw a special sneak preview Ooh, of this movie. Look at you. So now, you got to remember, I'm about 16 when this movie comes out, summer of 98, and I'm starting to go and hang out in the village and the city, you know, by myself and with my friends because we're cool. And there was an ad in one of like, uh, I want to say it was like the village voice or something like, yeah, yeah. oh, come see a screening of basketball, come here to pick up tickets. My friends had gone and picked up tickets and they said, hey. If you want to meet us, come here. We got passes to go see this basketball movie, but it's first come, first serve. So we're going to get there at super early. Yep. So say the movie was at seven o'clock. We had a friend that was demanding that we get online at noon because you've never been to one of these things before. Noon and it is, is the truth. Crazy. I never had been to one of these things before. So I'm assuming seven hours to get a free movie is probably what I need to do uh, because I'm 16 and my income is very low and I would love to see this movie, but I also need to see it for free. Yes. <laughs> so I do. We go and we're the only people on this fucking line. Of course, bro. Of course. 12 is crazy. <laughs> we are the only people. On this line. But eventually, they let us into this theater. I couldn't even tell you where the theater was at this point. It's I, I just remember standing on the side of the street in the middle of Manhattan for uh, hours. And because the screening, they start giving us, like, little gifts. So we get, like, an inflatable basketball they gave to everyone as they walk oh, in. Oh, that's awesome. They gave us, uh, like, a mini poster, a movie poster. They're doing some giveaways. Like, oh, cool, whatever. So I get to see the movie Basketball in theaters, and I am excited because this is genuinely a movie I want to see. This is my type of movie. I grew up on these weird comedies. I love the Naked Gun movies. Airplane, I like to a lesser extent, but like Naked Gun is my wheelhouse. Wayne's World, my wheelhouse. Fletch, the John Candy movie. Like this is this movie is going to be for me, and I know it is. It's a sports movie. Comedy, it's goofy, it's got these guys that I think are fucking geniuses at this point. So I am hyped to go see basketball. I love it. I love it. It's lining up at 12 o'clock. That's just so crazy. I thought you were gonna say like three, four. I figured three, four hours is good. Hours, bro. Hours. When did someone else when did someone else come behind you guys? When did someone else show up? How many hours were you there before someone else is like, is we this were probably, for basketball? We were probably there like a couple hours by ourselves. So crazy. And there was like but six I mean, of us. I'm, six I have been us. to things where I have lined up at six in the morning for free tickets to shit. So I, I get it. But I just, I don't know, maybe a movie, especially like, a movie like that. And, but the thing is, so at that age, I'm just thinking... Like a free everyone wants preview. to see this. Everybody wants to go. So I'm just like, oh my god, yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. Like now, I would look at that and go, you know what, dude, I'll just, I'll just wait and pay the twenty bucks. Yeah, that's. All <laughs> I'm, right. I'll no, see you no next thanks. week. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. So, so maybe I wouldn't get my inflatable basketball, but it's okay. I'll still see the movie. Um, as we get into this movie, we get all the different team names, the Milwaukee Beers, the Dallas Felons. They've all got their their themes. And probably the most offensive is the San Francisco Ferries. And they're a bunch uh, yeah. of gay guys. And I don't know. I didn't think it was offensive, offensive. But this, once again, this is me. I can't tell other people how to feel. But there's one of the psych outs that Coop does to make the other guy miss. Is he goes... 
uh, how to speak San Franciscan. And he bends Squeak over and pulls his butt apart and he goes, vagina. <laughs> and I fucking laughed. And I laughed. <laughs> oh, it's a good joke. <laughs> And if you don't get that joke, and I don't expect you to get that joke, I, in some ways I do, but the accent, he does an Australian yes. accent because these Foster's beer commercials Foster beer were commercials. all over TV at the time. Everywhere. You couldn't get away from it. And they all start, how to speak Australian. How to speak Australian. Oi! Hmm. Wake up, cool. Beer. Fosters. Australian for beer. And they put like the Fosters on there, like beer. Like this was supposed to be real Australian beer, yeah. which I don't know why that's supposed to be a good thing. Like, do I really need, like, I'm from Queens, bro. What the fuck do I need Australian beer for? It's exotic, bro. This is I Australian guess. beer. You ever try that shit? I never had that Fosters. I've never had a Fosters. Fosters. Oh my goodness. Uh, this movie bombs. At the box office. I think I there were it. high hopes for it because yeah. of the new the celebrity Brad. of Parker and Stone. Yeah. Budget is they $25 like million. Dollars. South Park. Not it Park. only makes $7 million at the box office. But that's what I would think. Like a movie like that, if it made $10 million opening weekend, like I, I think that's No, I didn't say opening weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it made... Three million dollars oh. opening weekend. <laughs> but I get, I get it, because you you're excited for South Park, not these fucking guys. Who the fuck are these guys? Like I get it, they're popular, but are you doing the Cartman voice? Where's Kenny? Come on, you know. I and, get I, it. and I do think that was a part of it. Like people were looking for them to make references to South Park. So at one point we do get the Mr. Garrison voice. At one point we do get the Cartman voice. Get Cartman but voice. one of the biggest things for me in this movie is the appearance of all the preeminent uh, sports broadcasters of the day within this it's film. It's pretty crazy. Yes, those those people are. It's it's crazy to see how much this is shit in there. This is a who's who, like a murderer's row lineup yeah. of Paul sports famous. broadcasting in like, this film. <laughs> Bob Costas, Al Michaels, Dan Patrick, Kenny Mayne, Tim McCarver, Pat O'Brien, Jim Lampley, and then we've got other appearances from Dale Earnhardt. We've got an appearance from Reggie Jackson. And we've got the band in the movie playing as Real Big Fish because they were on top of the ska movement at the time because they had a video that was getting play on MTV. And they also had two songs. Well, they had Sell Out, which was big on MTV at the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of brought the ska movement kind of a little bit more mainstream. Yeah. But they also have two songs on the soundtrack. And this is at the point, too, where movie soundtracks soundtracks still matter. Yes, sir. And this soundtrack is a fucking banger. You've yeah. got the Real Big Fish cover of Take On Me. And Take On Me, best. what do we know about that, Gomez? One of the top it's one the songs best. of all time. And their cover of it is a banger of oh, a cover. Oh, so good. One of the best Banger covers. of Fantastic. a cover. Fantastic. We've also got a cover from Smash Mouth on here with Why Can't We Be Friends. Very popular, yeah. We've got the Cherry Poppin' Daddies on here with a cherry cover. Cherry Poppin' Daddies. <laughs> Once again, product of the time, the swing phase swing. had come and gone. So funny. Zoot, we had, zoot riot. <laughs> we like, had what? a five-minute swing phase between the Cherry Poppin' Daddies and the Brian Setzer Orchestra. Squirrel Nut Zippers. Squirrel Nut Zippers <laughs> in the afterlife. <laughs> Could we miss it with a serious strike? <laughs> wow. But the Cherry Pop and Daddies are here doing a cover of Harry Belafonte's Jump in the Line, Shake Shake Sonora, oh, which yeah. actually becomes one of my... I love their cover of it so much from listening to this soundtrack that it becomes my favorite song to do at karaoke. Love it. And that love is directly it. tied to this soundtrack. But we've also got a song from Deep Blue Something, who was known at the time for their song Breakfast at Tiffany's. They go down Ooh. as one of the big one-hit wonders of all time. There's sure. a song from Nerf Herder on here called Don't Hate Me Because I'm Beautiful. There's just is it's a lot of a lot of bands, a lot of songs, a lot of good stuff on this soundtrack. I picked it up at a used DVD store in the village for like $2.99. Around this time, once the movie had just come out and I had listened to the soundtrack, I'm like, this thing is fucking awesome. I got to have this. And went out, got it, listened to it for years and years and years. 
soundtracks were so awesome. The best. Goddamn best. Now, we talk about the announcers. These announcers are doing things that are so out of character. Yeah. That it's really unbelievable it. that they actually got these guys to do it. Because I would see, under no circumstance do I think you get Al Michaels to say what he's saying today that he said in 1998 in this thing. And that's when, like, these guys are in their prime. Costas, Al Michaels, they are prime time guys, right? Al Michaels yes. doing football. Costas is doing the Olympics. The Olympics Dan Patrick and bro. Kenny Mayne are the go-to guys Sports on ESPN Center, yep. Sports Center at that time. Yes, Tim McCarver are. is the preeminent baseball analyst at that time. They get Costas and Michaels together, and it they've turned they turn Michaels into the creepy old man watching the cheerleaders, <laughs> like I like I talked about Jim Ross before. He's the Jim <laughs> Ross of the cheerleaders here. And Costas makes a comment at one point, like, hard to think that, like, this game only existed in driveways five years ago. And Al Michaels hits the line. He's like, and it's hard to believe that those cheerleaders were only in junior high five years ago. (laughs) Just insane shit that they got away with. And then later in the movie, Michaels makes a comment about being excited. And Costas comes in with, you're excited. Feel these nipples. Which, banger of a line. Banger of a day. And something I have quoted nonstop for the past two and a half decades. This movie yes, has sir. so many lines that I have quoted for the past two and a half de- decades. Something as simple as looking up and going, cock beer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love my my favorite thing. My favorite cameo in this movie is the unsolved mysteries Robert Stack bit. I think is just a fantastic. It just you think it's this quick little thing, and then it just keeps going, and it's like a whole segment of the show. It's the fucking best. Hanging by his fucking neck in the closet. I fucking die. Oh, it's so fucking good. <laughs> and at the end, like when they finally like wrap up the Robert Stack bit, he's like, I wish he was my boyfriend, canoodling, cuddling, kissing him softly as I caress his body against and then someone throws like a glass of water. It's like I just I love that all these serious people were just the most unserious they've ever been for this movie. I don't know what it was about this movie <laughs> that they were like, yeah, all right, I'll be a silly bitch. Let's go. Let's be crazy. Let's go it's, have it. It just seems it's so far out of character that I guess they, they all just agreed to like, yeah, let's just have fun, fuck it, and get paid. Um, maybe like they weren't getting movie roles like this before. Maybe they wanted SAG. Yeah. I, like, I honestly don't know what the reasoning behind because i would think to get these guys to do some of the shit that they did and said in these movies would have been impossible like i would have never even attempted to book al michaels to be the creep fawning over the cheerleaders you know what i mean no like i would have never even asked bob costas to say feel these nipples (laughs) true you know there's there's so many things in this even stuff like they have the third, right? Is Dean Bashar in the role of Squeak Scolari. And that yeah. was a, a role that Trey and Matt actually asked David Zucker to build build into the script because originally it was meant for a, a two-person team. They asked yeah. him to make it a three-person team so they could get uh, their boy a role here. He's such a great foil in he's, like he's for great. them in this. Oh, and even there's one part at the beginning of the movie where he moves into the house after they get him fired from his job at the gas company. And he's like, Oh, you, you, you say you talk to me like that 13 or 14 more times. And I promise I'm out of here. <laughs> so good. All the time. I use that last year. Um, or the, I don't know how long it was. It feels like last year when GCW ran the Hammerstein ballroom and Cardona had the match, Cardona and Myers, but then Chelsea was there and Swaggle was there and Knick was up in the balcony. It felt like yeah, everyone the was there except me. Yeah. Yes. And I posted the clip online where it's like, um, but at least I'm on the team. Yeah, I'm <laughs> on the team. And then the dog jumps in and like tackles. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Who knew this this, this movie's real important to Joe? I love it. It's I genuinely love this movie. And when I suggested watching it last week, 
I didn't think until it came time for me to watch it again that I was going to be nervous because there's a possibility it may not have aged well, you yeah. know, and that I was going to, you know, be a little uneasy with going back and watching stuff. Obviously, you have to put it in context for its time, right? And oh. that's what we're trying to do here by kind of building out what we, you know, what it was in the moment. But, but there's a, a lot of things that we grew up with that, quite frankly, haven't aged well, whether it's for quality purposes. Like, as much as I say this all the time, I loved He-Man as a kid. I go back to watch original filmation He-Man now. I can still get enjoyment out of it because I know what it meant to me in 1983. But I also know this is not very good. And hmm. with this, it's the double whammy of there's a real chance that this is not very good. And there's another chance that this is going to be highly offensive. And I still enjoyed it. And it was really not as offensive as I thought it, it might be because I worry yeah. about like what these guys could have said. And it really wasn't bad. that. So I came out of there almost loving it more for having watched it again because I was like, it was such a relief that I'm still allowed to like this movie. Oh, that's great. I loved it. <laughs> you know, wow. everything from them being in the locker room with their giant dick swinging around. Just knocking everything, everything over. <laughs> from, from Coop and, and Reamer breaking up to where Reamer reaches down, opens the drawer, Squeak is asleep in the in the drawer. And he goes, wake up, bitch, you're my new best friend. And Squeak goes, really? Can we go to the zoo? <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> it is good. Oh man. Let's find good. out how good, Joe. Let me yeah, hit some let's. music. I think we should hit some music. Are you a man? A double main man. Are you a man? A triple main man. A man, man, man. A quadruple main man. Are you our man? Are you our man? Basketball. Ooh, baby. It was 1996, Joe? 1998. 25 years. 1998. 25 years. Oh, man. What a throwback. It's, I'm so glad we watched this movie. I hope you guys enjoyed us talking about it. I hope you guys enjoyed rewatching it on yes. twitch.tv slash Mez movie. Thank yes. you, Gomez, for putting it up. I've probably, I think I've watched it like three times at this point love now. It. Love, um, it. love to hear it. I, I love that it's accessible. You, you made it accessible for me. So, like, I've continually just like left sure. it on and watched. Um, I love that I'm still allowed to love this movie. It, you know, I, I know I said it, but I was genuinely worried. Like, oh my god, like, what happens if this is like really inappropriate at this point? What hap What happens if it's just not that good? Like, I've been quoting this movie for two and a half decades, thinking like, oh my god, remember, you, you, have you seen basketball? And whenever, whenever you find someone that has seen and likes basketball, it's almost like you feel like you're part of a secret society. <laughs> because it's not it's not a widely regarded movie. Obviously, only made $7 million at the box office. So I think it did significantly better on home video because I feel like enough people have seen it where they get the references when I bring it up. So it's just one of those things where I'm so happy I get to like it. And there's certain visual gags that in this movie, something like when Reamer is first going through Baxter Kane's trophy room and it's like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's sneakers, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's goggles, and then it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and it's the genuine man sitting there and he turns his head to like gaze at him. Like doesn't even have to say a word, but like that alone is funny. It is. And it gets me every time. All the gags still hit for me with this. And apparently this movie gets the credit with creating the term derp. Yeah, it's used in this movie by uh by Reamer uh after the scene where uh they go through Brittany Kaiser's mom's uh panty drawer thinking it was sure. Britney's and he's yes. licking the vibrator thinking it was Britney's and yeah, so it's said then and then these guys take it into the next season of South Park where they use it a couple times and then it becomes like an actual term on its own so. But this is where it is accredited to is for its initial use in basketball. We get 
All the sports announcers kill it in almost every scene. We've talked about Al Michaels and Bob Costas. Tim McCarver there doing the interview from the losers yes. locker room where all the guys yes. in the locker room are wearing the gear that says like losers with the uh, tag still on it. Like they were <laughs> handed hats as they walked in. Stu Pendis. And I met Tim McCar- Tim McCarver was the Mets uh, color commentator as when Gomez and I were growing up on yeah. WWOR TV. And one of the, the first ever game I got to go to without parental supervision, just me and my friends, we went super early to Shea Stadium to try to get autographs. And we see Tim McCarver walking into the building and I've got a pen and a baseball. And I'm like, oh man, this is Tim fucking McCarver. Here we go. And I say, excuse me, Mr. McCarver, can I have your autograph? And he looks at me. He's got a briefcase in one hand and another small bag in the other hand. And he looks at me dead in the eye and he says, bag, son, I've got bags. And he turns and he just keeps walking. (laughs) Uh... So Tim That's McCarver, funny. I really wanted to tell that story. When I saw That's Tim McCarver, funny. I was reminded of it. And I even wrote on my notes, Tim McCarver, tell the story. Um, Love it. But great story. I, Tim McCarver passed away recently. He was in his 80s, lived a hell of a life. But I always remember that. Like, that is one of those indelible moments in my life. I had bags, son. I've got bags. Uh, there's just so – the Reggie Jackson appearance in this, where Coop goes from catching – Reggie's third home run at the game in 77 World Series to then Reggie walking on the field after Coop wins the Denslow Cup. And he's like, man, I got the first two balls from the first two home runs. Some snot-nosed kid ran away with it. But Coop, you go and enjoy your moment. Your moment. As Coop <laughs> turns to walk away, he goes, hey, Coop. And Coop just turns around and goes, I don't have your fucking ball, man. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's so simple, but it fucking pops me. When Coop first creates the Lazy Boy ball, it's this visual gag that just pops. He's like, you made this ball? And then he turns it around. It's got the Lazy Boy logo, and you just pan over to the couch just shredding. All cut up. (laughs) Brilliant. That's brilliant to me. I love this movie. I'm so glad it exists. I'm so glad we we rewatched it. And I hope all you guys had a wonderful time watching this movie, too. I'm going to give it... A quintuple main man, five star unicorn Ooh, basketball. Woo-hoo. I fucking love you, baby girl. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm gonna give it a four quadruple yeah. main man. It held up. I still enjoyed the movie. I still laugh when I was supposed to laugh. Like Joe said, I, you know, sure, there's a, a couple jokes that. Some people might take offense to, but it's not the whole movie. The whole movie is not like that, so there's nothing to worry about. I don't about. even I think, think they're really all that bad, considering no, what I, I thought know. that could have been in there. Sure, but some people just don't want to hear certain things, period. So, you know, yeah, whatever. But, yeah, no, nothing is bad. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching on Mez movie. Uh, it's not on any streaming, so I hope you caught it, because uh, this is a hard one to find. I don't understand why something like this why is this be on Paramount with all the South Park stuff, right? All that shit to be together. What are we doing? I don't know. Is this a universal flick, maybe? Oh, maybe. That's probably why. It's probably not part of their thing. Because I'm like, it should be. They should have a whole Matt and Trey section. South Park, put Orgasmo up there. Come on, folks. Get all that shit. I'm, I'm really glad we went back and watched this. I'm really glad we went back and did a little history on Matt and Trey because they've been Loved it. such a part of the, you know, like everything, right? They've been such a big part of comedy for for th- almost three decades now. And if you go back and watch something like Cannibal the Musical, or you watch Orgasmo, or you've ever seen the Book of Mormon, you know, you've ever listened uh, the South Park movie, all the songs that they write for these shows uh, that have been in just episodes of South Park that like are surprisingly good songs. Even in this movie, as I rewatched it, I was going, oh, but like. Of all the things, they didn't do a song for this movie. And then there's the scene where Coop is driving, driving to the, the airport car, yeah. to go take himself to Calcutta. And it's him on the radio singing the song about Can't everything that's happening. <laughs> when you're down, you got to get up. <laughs> Don't let them walk all over your face. Even if some guy's trying to blackmail you and your girlfriend thinks you suck. 
It's up to you to let them know it was all just some part of some rich guy's evil plan. <laughs> Look out ahead. There's a truck changing lanes. You've got some yellow crumbs on your upper lip. And those what's on your dick ain't going to go away unless you start using topical cream every day. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> So that song is called le- legitimately called Warts on Your Dick. I had it on my iPod for years back when I still had an iPod. But they're like they write these songs and they they're just so good. Uh, obviously, we use the song for the main man standings. That song is from Orgasmo. Yes, so many yeah, songs no. over the years in the South Park episodes. The one I continue to go back is the Fun with Weapons one, where he writes <laughs> like the uh hey, hey, let's go, Santa to you, you know. <laughs> Protect my balls when he's talking about like let's fighting <laughs> love, let's fighting <laughs> love. Great so stuff. Fun. So it's great stuff. And and now they bought Casa Bonita. So Casa Bonita is one of my favorite South Park episodes of all time. It's, it's based episode. on a real restaurant, a real Mexican food restaurant with like some activities and stuff to watch that you can go to out in Denver. I went there a few years ago with our double main man, Big Anthony Cool. And it was about to go bankrupt. Matt and Trey bought it. They've revamped it. They've done some stuff to it. It should be open, I guess, now. Should be reopened. Yes, I think it's open and they do uh, no tips, right? You're not supposed to tip. You're not supposed to tip. They pay pay their staff $30 an hour. Yeah. So that way there's no need to tip. You just come. They had a real chef come in that they hired to redo the menu. Make The the food was absolutely fucking terrible back in the day. It was absolutely trash Mexican food, but you loved it for it. When I went there, man, I couldn't get enough. They had a sign on the front door that said, eat so much, pay so little. But it wasn't pay as in pay, P-A-Y. It was peso, like P-E-S-O. <laughs> pay so that's little. Good. That's, that's good. a good sign. That's, that's how you I do love it. So, But it was all you can eat, and you could just go and eat, but it would destroy your insides before you even had time to stand up, let alone leave the building. Oh goodness, that's good. All right, yeah, that was fun, Joe. That was a fun little. Uh, I like I like going here. back and doing research yeah. and, and finding out I stuff did. about these movies. So I'm glad I we love got learning. To and guys, game, get bro. down in the get down in the comments. Let us know if you like this kind of thing. If this is something you'd like to see more of in the future, or if there's other movies, specific movies that you'd like to hear us talk about. Don't be shy. We love to hear it. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, we got to figure out what we're going to watch next week now, Joe. Mm. Mm. How are we going to do that? Well, I don't think you want to go to the movies to see The Haunting in uh, Venice or whatever. I do want to see that movie. (laughs) I do want to see it because I like Uh, those movies. (laughs) I am on vacation starting in about five minutes, however. So uh, I won't be able to get to the movies, but I will get to see this movie at some point. It's got like a, a weird cast from what I see. Always, it's always so random. It's a very eclectic cast. The like the trailer itself is just like this scary movie, and then you get Hercule Poirot. I was like, wait, what? This is one of these movies? Tina Fey. I was like, what? (laughs) So we're not gonna check that. I think we're gonna stay home and maybe do a little catch up, Joe. What do you think? Oh, I think that's a great idea. Oh, well, if we do that, then we're gonna have to bring out our our third host of the show, really. A good friend. Oh, my guitar. The wheel, Joseph. The wheel is the cause. Oh. <laughs> oh, baby. Let's uh, let's see what we have. The first week was good. Let's see. That's I don't true. know. I think it's all going to be downhill from here, but we'll find <laughs> out in a minute. <laughs> here we go. Spinning it. Oh, I will say, it did give us a good one with oh. Dungeons and Dragons. Fuck. Oh. Uh. Joe, no, um, the wheel has landed. <laughs> the wheel has landed on a remake of a 90s movie. This is available on your Hulu app. White Men Can't Jump. Joseph, mm. whoo, are you a fan of the original? Woody Harrelson. The original, yeah. Because good, now, a good I didn't movie. see it in theaters, but it was something that got played on TV all the time yes, for some it reason. Did. And while it was still relatively new, like it wasn't one of these movies that didn't hit syndication for years. It was like a year after it released theatrically, 
it was on TV all the time. So there's always that we go in Sizzla, we go in Sizzla. <laughs> of, course, of course, that's your favorite part. <laughs> oh, uh, our our friend Muhammad and I, we, that was our thing. Like we would call each other and he would just call me. I'd be like, hello. And he'd be like, we go in Sizzla, we go in Sizzla. <laughs> and we would go and gorge on corn fritters. Oh, so fucking good sizzle. times, great memories. The best. So, yeah, uh, watch along with us if you would like. Like I said, it's on Hulu. Uh, this one stars uh, Jack Harlow. He's a rapper that the kids apparently like. Oh, um, I thought it was the guy from the White Stripes. Uh, <laughs> it's not the guy Jack, from the White Stripes? Jack. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> that would be some movie, I got to say. <laughs> Oh wow! What a visual! I'm just picturing Jack White <laughs> slam dunking the ball <laughs> with the his music little, in the background with his little Seven boom, Nation boom, Army boom, outfit. Boom, of course, boom, boom, oh, boom, 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 boom. hysterical. I have not heard good things about this, Joe. I'm just gonna warn you right now. I hear oh, that's, that's exciting. It's not the best, but you know. But Maybe that's for next like week, it. Gomez. Yes, that's for next week, though. We'll worry about that next week but for now we should finish up this week oh let's do it it's now time for the big finish all right folks it's big finish time Let's spin that wheel. What are we gonna land on today? Oh, again! Oh, that's oh! It almost landed on Adam Sandler movies again for the second straight week. <laughs> Just missing out. Instead, it landed on superpowers you would want. Mm, I think this is easy. I think this is. One, two, three. Let's see. Here we go. Mm. So let's see. I mean, I think number one, we're going to teleport, be able to teleport wherever we want to go. That's Bing, bam, one. boom. I mean, it saves all the time in the world, bro. Yeah. It's um, important. I will go with shape shifting. Interesting. You up to no good. I know you. <laughs> you want to do so. You want to do some sneaky shit with that. I know I, you. I, I, I'm very, very sneaky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> Shape shifting. Hmm. If I can't teleport, then I want to run fast. I want to be like the Flash. I okay. can do fast things. You know, I can clean up the house in four seconds. Doesn't that sound fun? Okay. Um. So, in addition to shape shifting, I'm also going to have time travel. Oh, this guy's up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Time travel. You know, I don't know. I don't think. I think that'll cause too many problems. I would stay away from the time travel because it's you're going to overuse it. You're just going to get yourself in trouble, I think. That's what I think. I, I, don't, do I think I'll be okay. And then, I don't know, like... Uh, what do you want? You want like healing powers, maybe super strength? I'm trying to think. Maybe one of those. I'm not. I'm not sure. Super strong healing factor, right? You want to be able to heal yourself if you get sick, right? Doesn't that sound good? Uh, I'm gonna take uh, power absorption. So you want to steal someone's shit, huh? Like Whoa, rogue. What? Yeah. Like rogue. <laughs> uh... With the same kind of butt. Say with the same accent too, sugar. Yeah. Gonna... <laughs> I met Rogue before, and oh, we hit yeah. it off. Yeah, we, we met at Universal off. Studios. We had a really nice picture together. Was she trying to get into the Avengers Academy? What was she doing over there? She might have been trying to absorb my power. Who knows? Mm, you don't say. <laughs> but you know, I I made sure I was everything she wanted because I have the abilities to shape shift. So I turned into myself. Oh, I love it. I never change. 
<laughs> oh man, what a fun episode we had here today, Joe. Really Good long shit. one today. One of the longest ones we've done in quite quite some time. It's been a long but time. Really glad we did it. Gomez, thank you. Uh, thank you guys for all the birthday wishes. I know you guys have been reaching out. I really appreciate that. And thank you for listening to Car Gomez Podcast. Remember to hit subscribe. If you're on YouTube, ring that bell. Leave some comments. Tell us your three favorite superpowers that you would like to have. And also, if there's any old movies you want us to watch or what kind of contact content you actually like hearing us talk about follow us on all the social media at card jomez leave those five star reviews wherever you can follow all my personal stuff at the joe shoes pro wrestling tees.com slash joe shoes youtube.com slash joe shoes mm, the gomez 154 instagram twitter and blue sky and folks make sure you follow that uh that Twitch feed, twitch.tv slash mezmovie. Six weeks of horror is coming up, and I have a feeling we're going to have some fun content showing up on there. Oh, man. I uh, I can wait. <laughs> a couple more weeks, baby. A couple more weeks. Uh, just a matter of time before we get there. It'll be here before you know it. But Gomez, until then, let's make like Tom and Cruz. Peace. Peace.